Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Andy. It's time for the September 2020 Die Along with Kim Nets. And for this month, she's chosen this picture of this really cool looking rock that she took when she was at the beach. The, the picture, the rock, it's just the bare rock at the top and then one band in the middle of it where the, I don't know if it's moss or if it's algae, um, Chad thinks it's probably algae. I don't know, it could be moss. If any of you out there are experts in plants or in marine plants especially and know what this is, drop me a comment below. Let me know because I'm really curious and I've searched all over the internet and I can't find out what this is. But anyway, the, the rock, it starts with just the bare rock and then there's a band of the darker green of this plant that's growing on it where it's, I guess, dried out and then this absolutely neon green at the bottom where it's still wet sitting on the beach. So that is what we're playing with today. The yarn that we're going to be using for this today is Cascade Eco Duo, which is 70% baby alpaca, 30% merino wool. It is 100 grams, but it is larger than the yarn I usually use, so it's only 197 yards. And the reason I chose it is because I've already soaked it, which is why it's wet, but it's already got this sort of mottled light brown uh, off-white color to it because it hasn't been dyed. This is just the natural colors of it together. And while this might look like three skeins, it's actually one. I've divided it into three sections, and that's how we're going to dye it. We're going to dye one section in some brown that I've mixed up from Wilton's Icing Gel Brown. Uh, this is one quarter teaspoon and just a little bit of water. One section we're going to be dyeing with Chef Master Neon Green. Um, this is 10 drops of neon green and just a little bit of water. This is the first time I'll be using the Chef Master. Chad got me this set for my birthday and it's neon, so it's really cool. And then the third color, what we're going to use for the middle stripe, is a mix of the two. It is 10 drops of the neon and a, did I say a quarter teaspoon for mm -hmm. the, the brown? Yep. It's not a quarter teaspoon. The brown is an eighth of a teaspoon because I used a half of a quarter teaspoon. So this darker green is 10 drops of the neon green and an eighth a teaspoon of the brown mixed together. And we're gonna dye each one of these sections, one of these colors and have a long color change. Now the first one that we're gonna dye is our neon green. I'm gonna go ahead and move all of this out of here. I'm going to go ahead and move all of that out of my way so I don't do things like that. And I did grab a yarn mop today. I actually did a little bit of swatching with the colors on it as I was mixing them to see how I like them. So first up um, is going to be our neon green. So we can go ahead and move these two out of our way and move these two skeins at least over here. Okay, so we're going to start with the neon green. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in here. And I might need to mix up some more of this. Like I said, I've never used this before. I don't know how, how concentrated it is. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And this strand that's connecting this portion of the skein to the next, I'm going to put it in here and then take it out again. And it'll actually get dyed both this time and with the next skein. Or the next section of the skein. So that it creates an overall blended effect. And 
and now we just need to sit and wait for this to exhaust and then we can work on the next section. All right, so it's been actually about an hour and a half um, and our dye bath is pretty close to exhausted. There was already vinegar in this water in the crock pot and Chad being so awesome as he is um, when I was getting the yarn ready and everything and he was setting things up out here for me when he hadn't turned the crock pot on so the water was at least warm. Um, I was expecting the dye to exhaust a lot faster than it did um, but it was taking its time so I went ahead and put all of a sudden told an additional three tablespoons of vinegar in there. First I tried one more tablespoon and then I tried another tablespoon and then finally I said okay I'll put a third tablespoon in there. But I think we are pretty good for exhausted at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and take our yarn out. And it is a nice pretty green color and I'm just going to go ahead and put it in this for right now. That is, that is quite a lovely shade of fluorescent green. I'm gonna put that over there. And the reason I'm not worried about there still being just a hint of green uh, in the dye bath is because our next skein is the green, the darker green. which has some of that green in it anyway. Go ahead and put that in there. And since this has been, that dye has been sitting for a while, I'm going to go ahead and mix it up. I wish I'd move that away from there before it <laughs> Got my little yarn mop, which off camera Chad has already put in the now empty jar of the darker green dye. He's just playing cameraman today. He doesn't want to dye yarn with me and that's okay. He doesn't have to if he doesn't want to. All right, so now we can put the second skein in here. And as promised, this little strand that connects the two of these goes in here a little bit too. And same with the strand that connects to our third section. Okay, I think that's good for there right now. And a nice, nice olive green there. So now we will let this sit, hopefully not for as long. Hopefully it doesn't take an hour and a half. Because I'm going to want dinner before that. Are you going to want dinner before that, Chad? Uh, probably, yeah. Probably so. Mm -hmm. Dinner tonight is barbecue chicken, courtesy of Chad. So it's been about an hour on our dark green section and our dye bath is pretty close to exhausted. We just have just a little bit of green left in here. However, the yarn itself is brown. I think that Wilton's brown was too strong for the green. So what I'm gonna do Let's mix up a little bit more of that green and add it in. I'm going to go ahead and very carefully. 
carefully. And you can see that it's just, it's brown. It's not green. And that's not what we want. So I'm gonna move that over there very carefully because I don't want to felt it. I'm gonna add some more of this green. So that's about 20 drops. Mix it up real quick. And I can tell you that our dye bath water is now significantly hotter than it was for our first skein, our first section of this skein. back to that just really bright green now. So I'm going to take my tongs and I am going to very carefully put the yarn back in here. I don't want to agitate the yarn too much because this is not super wash. This is non-super wash alpaca and wool, primarily alpaca. And I can tell you this stuff is sticky enough to itself without heat and agitation. So I'm gonna let that sit. I am going to go ahead and turn off the heat. Um, not so much because I don't want heat on it, but because Chad's almost got dinner ready. So I don't want to forget about this out here and I don't like leaving it plugged in out here in the garage when I am inside and can't keep an eye on it because it's not on a power strip or anything. Good morning. I have slept. I have had coffee. And now I'm ready to see how our yarn looks after spending the night in this dye bath. Oh, that looks really clear. Oh yeah, our dye bath definitely exhausted. And let's go ahead and pull our yarn out. It's a pretty good color green, I'd say. I'm pretty happy with that. Our yarn got a bit discombobulated. That's okay. We will sort that out after it has dried. Okay, so that means that the next thing we need to do is dye our third stain. Now that brown turned out so strong on the middle section. I keep saying third skein. It's not third skein. It's still one skein. Our third section. Anyway, that brown turned out so strong on that middle section and I don't want to add that much color to this third section. So I'm not going to use all of this brown dye that I mixed up. I'm just going One tablespoon. Two tablespoons. Let's see. And let's go ahead with just a start. Three tablespoons of this dye bag. We've still got plenty left if we decide that we want some more color on that skein. 
I've already got that on my fingers. Come to me, yard and mop. Come to me and save me from the dye on my fingers. All right. Okay, now. I've added some extra zip ties to this section of the skein because I want some to resist. I like the, you know, natural undyed color of it as part of the just plain stone look for for this skein. So I want to keep some of that, but I do want to darken part of it as well. So I've just sort of added these silicone zip ties in places you know, tying it down tight around one section and then folding over the skein over that and tying it around tight a second time. Then that multiple places and it just, it looks like a knot. I promise you it's not a knot. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this in here. I haven't turned on the crock pot yet, but I will. I also haven't plugged in the crock pot yet, but I will. I literally walked out here, turned on the camera, and started recording because I wanted to see how the yard looked. I am so impatient when it comes to that. So this is just going to have to sit here for a while. Hopefully not too terribly long um, to absorb that dye. Our green's still looking pretty cool. I still haven't made my mind up yet about whether I'm going to add more dye to it. I have to decide. But I have time to decide. For now, I am going to plug in the crock pot, crank it up to high, and wait for this dye bath to exhaust. So our dye bath has pretty close to exhausted. Um, there's just a hint of orange. Yes, orange left in there um, and to be honest the yarn itself is reading a little orangey to me as opposed to just straight brown so what i'm going to do at this point is i'm going to go ahead and toss our yarn mop in here and let it just absorb the last bit of that dye and then since i want to put a little bit more of the green on this section. Um, once this is completely exhausted, I'm going to take the yarn mop and our third section, our brown section, out and we'll be putting our first section back in with a little bit more of that neon green and then we're going to put that in and let it sit until it's almost completely exhausted on its dye bath. And when that dye bath gets down to just a little bit of green, not fully exhausted, not even really this light, a little, went a little bit more than that, then I will take that green back out and put this brown section back in so that it can grab up some of that green dye. Because to color balance that orange to be more brown, we want to put some blue in there. And rather than mix up blue dye for this, green's got blue in it and that should help color balance this brown from the orangey back to more of an actual brown brown all right so our dye bath is now clear thank you to our yarn mop and go ahead and fish it out and let's get our get this section out or yarn and yeah it's still definitely reading a little on the orange side to me so I'm just gonna go ahead and set it in this bin over here to the side all right so I'm just gonna put 10 drops of the chef master neon bright in here Okay, so it's 10. And just stir it up. Mm 
Use my little whisk real quick to make sure there's no clumps hiding out. I wouldn't really expect that with this um, since it's much more liquidy, but it's it's kind of a jelly liquid, if that makes any sense. So, just good to be on the safe side. Plus, you know I like playing with this. All right, set that to the side. And now we can take our first section and you know as i said it's it's just a little bit more pale green than what i like i know it's showing up really bright on the camera but it, it's much more pastel in real life and when it dries it's going to be more pale so i just want to give it just a little bit more of that bright green color hopefully we don't take it too far i'm going to keep a close eye on it and like i said when the dye bath gets exhausted to a fairly pale point um, I'll go ahead and I'll put our brown section back in there just as it is. I'm not going to redo the resist or anything. Um, just to color correct that a little bit. So our dye bath has gotten quite a bit lighter. Um, I was going to let it go a little bit more, but they are doing some work on the power lines in our neighborhood. And they just came up and told us that we're going to lose our power very shortly and it's gonna go out for at least a couple of hours. We're also gonna lose it in the morning at eight o'clock for at least three or four hours. <laughs> it happens, it's okay. But our green here is looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and take our third section and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. But I'm gonna leave our first section in there as well so it can keep soaking up some of the green and we can color correct this orangey brown on our third section that way i've still got some heat going on in the crock pot before they turn the power off for the next couple of hours um, and also so i have some light so i can film this and y'all can see it because i'm out here in the garage and once they turn that power off it's going to be pretty dark in here so I'm going to keep a really close eye on this, keep a close eye on this um, third section to make sure that brown doesn't get really green. Um, and then at that point, I'll be ready to do a final set on it, which I'll just put all the skeins uh, in the crock pot um, and just let them sit in here overnight until they cool. And then I will wash them and let them dry and then show you what we got. And here's our finished skein of yarn. I am not going to lie, y'all. I love this skein. This may very well be my favorite skein that I have dyed since I started dyeing. I just, I love these colors together. The, the brown and then into this, this sort of mossy green and then this pop of the bright green that just jumps right out at you it's i don't know it just to me it just says nature and trees and earth and forest and plants and life and yeah it it makes me think of the sand dunes at oak island in the Outer Banks in North Carolina, which is one of my favorite places. That's where Chad and I go when we go to the beach because we just love it there. And there are these sand dunes there. If you've never been to the Outer Banks, they have, they have these huge sand dunes um, that protect the islands from the, the ocean. And this is what it makes me think of. The, that's what this makes me think of is those sand dunes with You've got the sand and you've got all these different plants in there and that's that's this um let's take a look at the colors individually real quick i i think we got a great representation a great interpretation of the photo that rebecca from chemnitz chose for this month's dialogue we've got that top of the rock with the different brown colors we've got that section with the the dried out moss and then we've got this bright 
bright neon green, like that bottom of the rock where the, the moss or algae or whatever it is, I still don't know, um, that it's still in the water, got that access to the water. So it's still vibrant, very much alive and just this beautiful, beautiful, bright green. So yeah, I think this was, this turned out to be a great interpretation of that. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to do some more with this neon green. I love this color. And one thing to remember is that the yarn we started with was not solid white. It wasn't solid at all. It was, remember, that, you know, really, really pale brown, um, different brown colors, the natural colors. And you can still see them here in our resist sections. In the green section here, we get a little bit of different variation from that. If we went with even more dye here, I think we, we could cover that up completely. So if you've got a skein of yarn that you don't like the color with, or you just want to do something interesting, you can absolutely over dye it and change the color completely. And it definitely, of course, gave us some more variation in this section of the green. I do not have a swatch for y'all this time um, for a couple of reasons. First of all is the way we dyed this, it's going to be long color changes. So it's, I'd have to knit up this entire section before I got to this and then knit up this entire section before I got to this. Knitting up a swatch of this would basically be knitting up the entire skein of yarn. Um, I could technically the way that we did this, I could grab a strand at the beginning or the end of each section and knit from it sort of a, you know, faux swatch um, that I would then unravel. The problem with that is this yarn is very sticky. I don't mean like it's been covered in sugar, like a lollipop is sticky, sticky. What I mean is because of the way it's spun, it is a single with a lot of, I don't know if I want to call it haze, um, but, or what the technical term is, but if you look close, you see these little hairs around the, the sides of it. That's how it's spun. And it's spun to have that, and it, it gives it this, this haze around it, um, this halo of, of the fiber. And as you can see, they like to hold on to themselves. The yarn's not felted. Um, I, I was a little worried at one point when it was drying because the ends just looked all matted. Um, but no, it's it's not felted. They pull apart easily, but they like to stick, the strands like to stick to each other because of these little hairs that they like to do that. Um, when I took this out of the skein in the first place to separate like this, I had a lot of trouble with that and had to fight with it um, to get this all wound up like, you know, and separate out the way we did. So I know that if I were to knit this up and then try to unravel it, it's, it's not gonna wanna unravel and it's not gonna be pretty. So this is not the kind of yarn that I would suggest knitting up a swatch as you just plan to unravel. Um, you're gonna be fighting with it. And since it's a single, I would then worry about how well it would hold up to re-knitting, you know, knit, unravel, re-knit, you know, eventually you're going to reach a point where it's just not, not happy yarn. Um, so no swatch this time. Y'all have to wait until I make something out of this to see how it really looks together. But basically it's going to look like this. You will have a section that's just this, and then you'll have a section that's a big, color block of this and this section that's a big color block of this. Um, and I think it's just going to be gorgeous. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to make out of it yet. I have not decided. Um, obviously, it takes me time to decide these things. I just dyed this. Um, and I have a lot of things on the needles already that I need to get done. But this is how it turned out. Um, like I said, I just, I love how this turned out. I think it's just gorgeous. Um, I, I really enjoyed this, this month's dialogue. I had a lot of fun with it. It was really interesting. This is doing these long color changes like this. This is a whole new technique for me. I've, I've never dyed that before. I haven't done a lot of playing around with resist either. 
So it was fun to get to play with that. And I think what we came up with was actually, is, is absolutely gorgeous. So I hope you had fun joining me while I dyed this skein of yarn for the Chemnitz September 2020 dye along. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below with any thoughts that you have. I'd love to hear from you. And especially if you happen to know what that material is that's growing on that rock in, in Rebecca's inspiration photo. I would really like to know what that is. I'm very curious. So anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you on our next adventure.